Right, hello everybody. This is Mr. Leedles doing a quick special thing for the Extreme Indoor League of Football. Since the return a few weeks ago, wanted to quickly cover some of the happenings in the league, cover how the playoff standings are going, and alongside me, I am joined by the coach of the Horny Polis Patrol, RF Beef, Roll Fizzle Beef. How you doing? It's football. Give. Yes. And we've been given quite the showings over this season so far some of them bad some of them good some of them them great yeah all of them great in their own respective ways and going over some weekly showings we actually get to start off with your team role is horny polis patrol and horsington steeds that started off the week obviously a crushing overtime defeat there but again it's one that was thankfully not divisional so really more helped horsington than hurt you well, I mean, once you get down to week 11, week 11 on to week 18 is rivalry week. You can't leave anything on the table. And, you know, I was up in the booth for that game. I, it was always an interesting treat to watch my team play exactly as I expected them to. Right down to the final score. Yeah, You know, think things might change uh, if it continues to go this way. We might have to do some coach changes. We might have to do some uh, some personnel changes on the field, but uh, I know my team can do better than how they've done in the last three weeks, and we'll just uh, we'll just say if they can do if they can do well down this next little five week stretch, we might not have to worry about anything changing. Yeah, and that is a very fair point. I mean, last week was a bye week for your team, if I remember correctly. Week nine was a loss to uh, division rivals Hellraisers, so. Not the worst. It could have been three losses in a row, but also... It is, it is in fact, three losses in a row. Because <laughs> the week before that, week eight... Uh, oh, no, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, week, I was uh, counting 11, 10, 9. Pardon me. No, I, I got that incredibly wrong. It is two losses in a row. Uh, but really, if you're not playing, you're losing. Yeah. And so it's three. Even to your point, week eight was a dominating victory over victoria i believe that was your second win over victoria which does mean you have that luck if somehow it comes down to you and victoria getting a playoff spot you'll have it on divisionals and i think that's actually a really good segue into the other played game on sunday uh where victoria out of nowhere yeah 31 points i don't know how the hell they did it but they beat burbank so thank you (laughs) yeah it's it's Always it, fun to watch a team that looked down and out maybe around week seven start to pick up steam and just into this last stretch, these last few furlongs of the course, so to speak, yeah, just to start to pick up that steam. Considering the week before, they had also beaten the Topeka Mockingbirds 34-27, only getting their, at the time, third victory of the season, now beating Burbank. You have to wonder if they're maybe going to pull pull a real life comparison, almost the Phoenix Suns. Of all of a sudden, they start surging in momentum. Well, if they're going to do anything, I think their kicking situation needs to start getting into shape because I, I believe Adam Jensen, he's a close to around sixteen percent completed on field goals. This total, yeah, that's going to kill them. That is absolutely not very kill good. them. If they're missing, I, I, <laughs> sorry, I had to go to my uh, my statistics crew, my. Uh, my analytics guys in the back room and I pointed at that stat and asked, is that good? <laughs> I didn't get an answer. So I'm assuming it wasn't as 16% completion. I doubt it. Uh, but again, I do have to thank Victoria as they made my, uh, the Chattanooga Chumbawamba's path to the playoffs a little easier. Now, if we beat mobile, it's going to be a three way tie for first place, which firstly, what the fuck? Secondly, that gives us a good <laughs> chance, considering all three of those teams are also going to have a bye week, so we're all playing the equal amount of games. Yeah, look, you know, there's a lot of divisions out in uh, the XILF that are uh, anyone's game. Everyone wants to win. Uh, there's only maybe one or two teams, yeah. I would say, that are running with their division right now, and even then, uh, Memphis, who are one of those teams, do have Massillon right on their keister. Yeah, and the key thing is, Massillon are going to play Memphis this week, which is a major game, not just for those two teams, but for the division in general. See, the key thing 
form that division, Massillon needs to win. It not only <laughs> well, ties I mean... it not only ties them up, but it keeps almost every other team in the playoff hunt because then it's less games to catch up. Horsington six and four, a big win did help them out, but they need to get up. Santa Clara, they're playing the Akihabara Tentacles. Both of those teams are needing wins. Orlando playing in our featured game against the Salad Fries, a divisional match of the two <laughs> bottom teams. But the sad thing is they both have playoff chances. Yeah, it's it's all up for grabs in the American East right now. Uh, I kind of look at Orlando being the dark horse in this division. I've, I saw that from the start. I feel like quarterback overdrive uh, is showing what he can do, showing how powerful he is, he could how be popular going, he is. He he's actually be, really popular with the fans. Yeah, he could He's be, winning them over. He could be going into overdrive in these last eight to nine weeks. Does have to does have to work out that weird kink where he throws with his leg and he kind of just flips over? Yeah, it's a little bit awkward. It's almost <laughs> setting people up directly for sacks, but if it works, it works. Yeah, and just, we may see it work it, against Pittsburgh. Well, I mean, a lot of things work against Pittsburgh. The problem is Pittsburgh has a ton of stuff that works against other people and themselves and the referees <laughs> yes. that we we yes. pay specifically not to call things. It, it is. And the commissioner. <laughs> They're five. just they're Pittsburgh just a team that loves, sorry, loves to race hell. So they're just a team that loves to race hell is all I'm saying. Yeah, they're, they're all they're almost the bad news bears of the <laughs> league, except nobody likes them. The bad news dub bears. That's what they are. The Pittsburgh salad fries, if you could sum them up in a quotation, it's we may win, but I may die. Yes. That is a every very... salad fries every salad fries fan says that on a weekly basis and i love them for it they're the type of person who would fucking go into DD and just be like i'm gonna break every door i see that's literally what it is it's just okay what are you gonna do i'm gonna kick the door down here's <laughs> salad fries yes that's the most scary fucking thing you could say about it is, is the come playoffs they sneak their way in it's just here's salad fries yeah. uh, that they they have the outside of outside of chances but you know from three and I've, six from, five games back with from what i've studied six left. from what i've studied they are playing this week they'll have six games left they basically need to win out and massillon horsington and slash or memphis to collapse to be fair easier set or easier with horsington kind of skidding <laughs> Now they picked up steam again, but they did. But that skid in the like early mid season, oh, because they started what six and zero or five and one, and then I think it was three losses in a row. Yeah, Horsington is a team that matches up well against very specific offenses. But if you have either the star power or just the game plan to get around them, they do have holes in that defensive scheme that can be exploited. Not to mention the uh, injury to their quarterback that they had suffered. No, it doesn't help either. No. And I mean, for teams that could talk about quarterbacks being hurt, Hartford. <laughs> ha yeah. Jesus Christ, Hartford. You What's guys, up? I feel bad. Hartford's still out, I believe, four weeks without their star quarterback, Salakadu Labibidi. Those are going to be a tough four weeks. And... Uh, last I checked, yeah, at least a, at least a month. Uh, at, at the very least, they do have their kicker Jose Elefante left to, to uh, yeah. man oh. the man the guard. So if the backup goes down, there is a star player with some talent. Yeah, uh, Elefante, I think I would say pound for pound is one of the best, if not the best, kicker in the game. And then that's going to help on special teams. It's going to help on long field goals. You know, it's uh, it's never good to have to settle for three, but if you are that far deep in your into your own territory that you have to kick it away, you might as well go with someone who can get you three points. Yeah, it's almost a guarantee that he's going to get the three points. He works no, almost, no, but... No, no guarantees, but yeah. we'll see. <laughs> there's, uh, there's three guarantees in life. Death, taxes, and hating the salad fries, but... <laughs> well, love, hate. Yeah, I love hate relationships. I think going with Hartford, we can talk quickly about uh, the 
teams that are going to be playing in the simulated games coming up. Yeah, I uh, mentioned before, we have Akihabara and Santa Clara, both teams vying for a major win. Portland Wood Shoppy Boys and Buffalo Wild Things. Buffalo, if they win, can make the American South Division a four-way tie for first place. And, <laughs> yes. But if Portland loses, they're going to probably join Rosemont and New England and basically being out of the season. Just Florida City is run away with that division. Yeah, and just it's it's an uphill battle going up against uh, you know a championship caliber team like the Ford, Florida City Men. But man, that National Midwest fell by the wayside quicker than I thought they would. Well, New England lost their QB. New England collapsed after yeah. that loss. They just they folded. Yeah, and you expect one team to to start to to sag off a bit, especially when you have a team that goes eight and one like Florida City. You you have two teams in that division that are two and seven right now. Another two that are three and six. Topeka are fighting the good fight at four and five, but they are four games back. Six yeah. games left to play. Seven maybe. I haven't checked the full schedule yet. Uh, but they are the furthest away of any contender to a division leader. Considering we are at week eleven and Topeka plays, they're going to have six games left. They still have a bye week. Okay, so I mean, they win out. They're ten and five. That could be good for a wild card spot, it but they're going to have to. They're going to have to start, you know, putting some chains together and start getting some wins. You also have to remember that Florida City got into the playoffs last year, if I remember correctly, on a wild card. Yeah. Well, hey, once you get into one on one and single elimination, anything. anything's up for grabs. Yeah, absolutely, anything can happen there. So, uh, moving on well, for it... next one. <laughs> I mean, I should talk about buffalo as well buffalo has been for all intents and purposes been a surprising story i believe their qb how he do it or wide receiver how he do it excuse me had been out basically from the start of the season to out of season completely yeah he uh he got hurt pretty quickly i think uh no earlier than week three yeah and he something was, like that. he he took a pretty nasty spill on a hit and you could tell right away that he wasn't coming back. Dude it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. And uh, it's it's great to see Buffalo hold together decently, considering they're five and four. They're only a game back. A win here puts them into that tie for the American South. Yeah, and you also have to consider last week they beat Mobile, who are at the top of the division right now. So they hold some semblance over them. So with the tie, really, Buffalo is going to be above Mobile. And it depends how they play against Chattanooga and Burbank. Yeah, it's going to... That division of any division here, the American South, is going to come down to head-to-head. I feel I like there's going to be a tie, and one team is maybe going to get uh, maybe the short end of the stick in the playoff picture. <laughs> judging, off how, uh, judging off how it was last year, probably going to be the Chumbawambas. Hey, you never know. I, you just got to play strong. Yeah, I'm just saying it happened to me last year. Because that's how Florida City got in. <laughs> it won't be by Burbank this time, hopefully, considering they lost. But uh, yeah. I can only hope. Well, hey, Chattanooga is the topic next because they're up against the Mobile Rumble. It's a yeah. divisional matchup at the top of the division. Um, it's not a feature game, but uh, I'm interested to see this, the the uh, stat line here because Chattanooga specifically likes to put big games together. When they yeah, click, it's... they are a top-end engine. It's just weird to see and them not click the in the weeks. The key thing here, back in week five, Chattanooga beat Mobile 55-54. to 54. They so again, win this tiebreaker, hold over Mobile that, completely. Yeah, you, you always want to have that head-to-head, which is why division games are umpteen times more important than any other division. Any non-division games, I should yes. say. Yeah. Pro- I mean, obviously, if you have games like what happened with Victoria and Burbank, those are going to be important if you win them. But if it's a divisional game, it's a hell of a lot more of a matter to actually take in your hands and actually deal with than just these games. Again, like uh, Portland and Buffalo, we just went over, non-divisional, not as important. It helps you stay in the picture, but for how long? Wins are nice, but... Wins against division rivals are sweeter. They're always sweeter. The team wants it more. And 
you got to give it to your fans. You got to win those games because you know what? The XILF is dependent on fans. The cardboard cutouts in the stands, they are based around actual people that we found loitering around the undisclosed location in Cleveland, Ohio. They are the fans, and you've got to give them the win, even if they can't respond because they're cardboard cutouts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, we touched on it earlier, but moving on to perhaps the most important game of the week, Memphis versus Maspola. Yeah, Jesus Christ. Memphis versus Massillon. Let's try that again. Memphis versus Massillon. Mm -mm. Yeah, this is a... American East cook-off right now. Because these two teams are maybe some of the most fun to watch. We're not going to watch them because we have salad fries on the brain. Yeah. But still... <laughs> we have uh, other if things you to worry about. If you want high-octane football... Memphis versus Massillon should be the game to keep an eye on the stat line for. If you uh, have, because if, both, if you have both a, sides can put up points. Let's just a, put absolutely. It out if you have a radio, why? But <laughs> these two can light you, up if, the scoreboard. If you have a shortwave radio, you may be able to tune in to the coaches' headsets. Go for it. <laughs> yeah, try, try to do that. You know, and I think this is going to come down to the quarterbacks between uh, Massillon and uh, Memphis because Butte reach around for Massillon has been such a galvanizing force. He has put up uh, great throws when they've needed it. He hasn't always looked great, you know, but that's that comes with age sometimes. You know, twitch reflexes aren't there. Butte's a longtime veteran of the game. Just he he used to go to he's a great up games. he's a great game general is the thing like yeah, he well, is a, amazing at managing a game it's just sometimes his reads aren't the most accurate but that's a thing that's going to happen with age whereas you compare it to who I, if i remember correctly the first overall pick brad epic he can light up the scoreboard especially with the wide receiver dennis gilder but he doesn't have that sort of almost field awareness that other qbs do yeah, it's definitely a, a, a game of talent versus wisdom. And that is and especially you... true with Massillon's linebacker, Ray Caesar. I, Ray Caesar. I have a feeling Brad, if he makes one mistake and Ray Caesar's there to capitalize on it, that may be the game-changing moment. May yeah, end up just being... Learn, learn, to take, learn to take a hit, Brad, because yeah. Ray Caesar is in the house. Caesar's going to make you take a few hits. Uh, moving from there, I believe we have a few games left. Topeka versus Sioux Falls. In a divisional match, both teams trying to stay alive desperately here. Topeka are yeah, this is, four games this is a tr five. This is a tread water moment for Sioux Falls. Pardon me. I, just, I have to get this out of my chest here because Sioux Falls always seems like they're just a step behind where they should be. Yeah. They have the talent, they have the ability, but they're just not there. And I just I wonder why. It happened that it happened last and, year and it happened this year. 3 and 6 to me uh, for the Numpties feels all too unacceptable. And I I wonder who needs to get their button gear in order for that to get better. And there's a bunch should of options we? on that. Yeah. Well, uh, the Topeka, on the other hand, I think they're more a victim of the division than anything. Yeah, you, they, you have, they have. You have, to, you have to play game. two games against Florida City. Uh, you do have a bit of a soft landing in Rosemont and New England, but those are not easy games, yeah. despite the record. Soft, soft landings, not easy ones to make. You have to still be able to beat those teams. You have to play Portland. You have to play Topeka, as we're seeing this week. And while Joe Names Upon has been a solid QB, I don't know if he's the right fit in a way. He makes a few mistakes here and there. It just, for some reason, he doesn't seem to click as well with the team. I'm going to actually ask you something because I'm curious uh, on, on this uh, opinion from you. Do you think that's a, a scheme misfit or is it just, uh, he, you know, maybe he's he's overthinking things? Maybe it's just. He's he needs to get in with uh, the team psychiatrist, aka the hobo that lives under the Russell's athletic spot. Yeah, 
I I don't know. I would say to scheme misfit because if you want, honestly, I think he would be a better fit over maybe at uh, maybe Santa Clara. Considering they have a solid running back, they have a solid kicker. Their quarterback's not that great. Joe Namath, upon moving there, would be a awesome grab for Santa Clara and would potentially throw them into the top of American East. It's a shame that trades aren't on the table yet, but uh, once the draft comes up next season, Santa Clara may be on the lookout for a QB. It all depends on uh, where the wheel spins. Uh, yeah, and that's not to knock, obviously, Fu Bong Give or any percent, but in a pass-heavy league like the XILF is, you have to be able to have a good quarterback, have good support around him. A running back is fine. Trust me, I drafted four of them, but <laughs> it's short not. Yardage, man. Yeah, it's short. It's a short yardage in a game where you have to just throw spirals. That's how this has been since XLF has come back, and I think it's how it's going to be for a few years. All right. Well, let's uh, let's wrap up uh, our look at this week to come with Hellraisers versus Hartford Hangover. The Hellraisers continue to be in that dog pile up at the top of the National West. The division that everyone wants to win and nobody's looking to lose. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, we have uh, the ha Hartford Hangover, who are kind of just trying to stay alive at this point. Considering, yes, like, they are. without a QB, it's difficult. I don't know. Hellraisers are weird. They'll have games that they'll do great in. They'll have games that Charlie Day gets injured fifty times and leaves to take a <laughs> shit. And you know what? Uh, I know these. I know that team all too well. Had a battle with them that went down to the very final point, uh, and I know what they can do. I just wonder if they can do it for the rest of the season. Yeah, I... it's it's a team of peaks and valleys in the last stretch. And if you get a valley in that last couple of weeks, ends, you're not yeah. going to be in the playoffs. Yeah, I can attest to that. I played them twice. I mean, beat them twice. Both games have been close within one or two scores of each other. But it's always just, it, it seems Charlie Day is just a weird, in almost an enigma for them. He could do great. He could do horrible. At, at the very least, though, uh, DeBar Newcar for hell has been consistently good as a cornerback. Yes, uh, and he has been that... amazing. That has been absolutely needed for Hell on, on several defensive stops, uh, which has kept them in games that maybe they didn't deserve to win. I can think of one or two that they were maybe bailed out by that back end. Charlie Day wasn't having his best day. Yeah, Plus, the pun. he's also been a solid wide receiver as well. He's gotten yeah, quite he's... a few touchdowns on offense. Maybe not what it was intended for, but he's really good. Well, I think when you, you look back at uh, Charlie McAlpine, or Angus McAlpine, pardon, pardon me, I'm thinking of his dad, Charlie, who uh, was uh, part of a Sandlot League who uh, unfortunately went defunct because Charlie himself burned down the Sandlot. Don't ask. How do you uh, burn Sandlot? Angus, turn it into glass. <laughs> Make it a glass it lot. Was, it was really hard for the players that didn't have shoes, but Angus McAlpine, pardon me, uh, was absolutely on fire in that last game uh, in week 10 where he himself, or I'm sorry, yes, week 10, where he himself picked up, uh, what was it? It was a touchdown and a fumble? Yes. Fumble recovery, yeah. I believe so. And it's just, I'm, I'm bringing this up because you're, it's, it's a game where we have a lot of two-way players, and sometimes you don't expect certain players to show up but when you get that kind of benefit yeah with from a, a quarterback player who that can, can throw his body yeah from a campbell, player who can play both. campbell mcalpine I'm, campbell mcalpine i got it on the third try <laughs> sometimes that happened hey um, it, took, it yeah. took me like 50 tries to get in memphis versus vassalon correct so don't worry about it i was thinking of angus mcalpine uh Charlie McAlpine's nephew who went to jail for the Sandlot burning down. There you go. <laughs> bit of a yeah, bit of a frame fine. job there and everyone knew it, but you're going to put what, Charlie what McAlpine. Can you, yeah, what can you do? So before we uh, head off, I wanted to get a quick 
I guess, question to you. If we had to do predictions of how the season goes, where come week 18, these are your playoffs, <laughs> who do you see making it? I think well, we could. Uh, I'm I, gonna <laughs> uh, say I think we could both get the obvious one out of the way here. Florida, the City. Mobile Rumble. Oh, <laughs> no, I'm just messing with you. Uh, Florida City. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I was I was gonna make the the big one for one bet there and put all my money on Florida City making it to the playoffs. Uh, I do like Memphis. They're just a very strong team on both ends of the ball right now. Eight and one. It's kind of hard to to say no to that. Yeah, going into the last it, little it is, stretch. It's hard to say no to it, but Massillon and Horsington still both pose a threat. Yeah, they're they're still there. I think at the very least, Memphis can make a wild card. Yes, absolutely. If, at this point, if, if if this goes pear shaped for them, they can salvage that. Yeah, but I I think it's, if Memphis don't make playoffs this year, it's going to be one of the biggest choke jobs in sport. Like, how do you? Out of six games you have, uh, seven games technically counting week eleven, and you're eight and one of you don't make playoffs. How do you, like, how do you as a team recover from that? I don't think you do. I th- I think you do have to look yourself in the eyes in the off season if you choke that hard, and there might be personnel changes. There could be there could be player changes, but. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not saying that right now because Memphis looks great, uh, and I don't see them falling too far behind. No, it, at worst, it'll be a battle between them and Horsington for the wild card. Hmm. Uh, as far as National Midwest and National West go, the <laughs> winner of West is a bit weird to choose from. Everyone eight in that, div- yeah, everyone in that division has an option. Eight and eight. <laughs> the real. The real issue is who's getting wild card. Because when it comes down to it, anyone in National Midwest can make wild card if National West keeps becoming the 8-8 eight and eight division. Well, I would say the National Midwest would have to keep their eyes on Topeka right now because of the three teams that are really in contention for that wild card spot, Topeka is the team that's playing the most consistently. Uh, they maybe don't have the same uh, highs and lows as a Portland. They maybe don't have as much straight-up talent as a Sioux Falls, but they play to their strengths, and they don't take a lot of mistakes. Yeah, they are a very consistent team. That's the best thing you could say about them. They're and, extremely consistent. You know, it, it, it's like putting your money into bonds, you know? It's a lot safer uh, of an investment. And when you do that, you don't have predatory loans on your back every day. Yeah. With the uh, poor decisions of the day. Of course. Uh, but as far as that, I just, I, I don't know. Because for National West, I still have a feeling Hartford's going to recover from it. It's something about how they're able to play, even without their QB, that once these like four to five weeks are up and he's recovered, Hartford's going to bounce back, and they're going to bounce back hard. Well... My one issue, having watched The Hangovers, uh, is even when they had that QB in place, even when the the full team was healthy, I wasn't scared by them. Which that's, that's a, you're not intimidated by Hartford straight up. They're a great team. You know, they're a team that can absolutely make the playoffs. But at the same time. I, I look at what they put on the table each week, and I'm like, I think if I I can put a comparable amount of effort and talent from my people into that game, I can take a win anytime. Yeah. And I I feel like Hell feels the same way. Akihabara probably feels the same way. Victoria at four and six, they gotta feel like they've got a fighter's chance at this as well. Every team in the division has a fighter's chance. I'm gonna go bold. I'm going to go real bold. I'm going to say National West are going to get Hartford, Victoria, and Horny Polis in the playoffs. I feel it's going to... Yeah, I feel it's going to go three-peats for National West with National Midwest just being Florida City men. Topeka Mockingbird is consistent. I just have a feeling that they're going to... Something's going to screw with them. There's got to be something that messes with them. 
I'm I'm gonna stay out of this one because it is my own division, and I don't feel like I should uh, put any any strong bets out there. But I am just gonna slide this piece of paper that says eight and eight all the way <laughs> onto the table and yeah, just I would, I'm gonna fold my thing. arms, I'm American gonna, South. Yeah, I'm gonna do the same thing with the uh, Amer- with the American Conference. I'll leave that to you. Well, the American Conference, uh, especially in the South Division is still a, a pretty close race. You do have the Tampa Bay botch on the outside looking in, but one win can change that. I do like Burbank. I've always seen Burbank, even with a tough loss here, putting them back a bit. I just, I look at them and I think that's such a consistently good team and not in the same way that Hartford, uh, a Topeka is good or a Hartford is good. Burbank is, is good. Burbank is like a special kind of consistent where their peaks plateau and they just keep in that same little sweet spot where they they look like they're winning even when they're two scores down. And they just hold themselves in such great poise that any game is winnable for them at any point in time unless it's the final seconds. Yeah. And, they're down. Right. and yeah. I just I look at I look at Mobile. I don't see that. They're they're a very talented team. They run, they pass, they they can stop anything at any point. But I just feel like it's hard to not put money on Burbank. All right. That's just it's a gut reaction. Makes but I sense. feel like Burbank comes out with the division, and I I see oh I see one wild card coming out of the American South. All right. So you're saying at, at two to two, so two in American yeah, I, East, two in American South. I'd, I'd say it's going to be uh, just because of how far Massillon and Horsington are. It's yeah. going to be hard for some of the teams in the middle of the American South to push up. So I just I look at how everything is so evenly placed in the American Conference. It's it's going to be two in each division. All right. That makes sense. But Burbank is my po- my chance my choice to go with the entire division and take that top seed. So then I'm assuming American East is Memphis for your pick. It's kind of hard to say no, but yeah. don't discount Massillon, Horsington if they can continue their run will have their swing at it. But I feel like until Horsington can put on you know two or three wins in a row, Memphis and Massillon are the two front runners right now for me. And they may end up being 1-2 or 2-1. All right, and then put you on the spot. If you had to pick the wild card of American South, just to get you're, the, just, you're, just to get the you're, four. You're just fishing. To get, you're just to you're get, fishing. No, I, I, I did it for national. I did it for national conference. I did it for oh, national okay. conference. I did all four. Okay. Yeah, okay. Keep, keep it consistent. I, this is bait. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's a trap. Uh, I, you know, if I'm going Burbank Division, man, that is so even. I want to say right now it's Mobile, but I could change my mind tomorrow. Yeah, because it's gonna come. It's gonna come down to that game week eleven. I don't exactly know. Sorry, I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm kind of sitting back here a bit because I'm, a, I, oh, like you're, feel like I'm putting five hundred dollars down on a team here. <laughs> <laughs> kind of feel like I'm under the gun. But yeah, I, I kind of feel like it's Burbank taking the division, even though that they're that half game back right now. I feel like they're going to recover from it. Mobile right now is that front runner for the wild card, but. I think you have everyone down to the Encino Egas even uh, making a run at least some point. Uh, but we're going to see some teams filter up in the American South by week 15. Yeah, I definitely feel I could I could feel even by week 13 or 14 we'll see at least a few eliminations. Just Rosemont and New England are the obvious ones that I feel if Florida City keeps winning, they're just going to get eliminated. But even then, like, Pittsburgh, Orlando, or Santa Clara, either of them, maybe both. Tampa Bay, and Sino, maybe somebody in National West are going <laughs> to fall come week 14. 
Yeah, I think I think we can't do too much navel gazing right now. It's it's still fairly early into the second half of the season, but you're looking at some teams under the gun right now to put up some performances. Uh, and it's not just the ones that are two and seven. I think uh, even four and five, four and six teams right now need to look at themselves in the mirror and say, get going. Yeah. I think that's a, that's a pretty good place to, to leave it. I think, yeah, I think I th we've got, we've gone over full week 11. We've gone over all the playoff fixture standing. I think that's a pretty solid wrap up. So again, this was, uh, the coach of the Horny Polis Patrol, Rolf Fizzleby, coach of the uh, Chattanooga Chumbawamba's Mr. Weedles, and hopefully we will be back next week to go over week 12, if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, we'll see. see uh, until, next until next week, it's football, give, yeah. and it's all legal. All right, have a good night. <laughs>